Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jamsy Online YouTube channel. My name is Nicholas Wolfram and I operate Jim's Automotive Machine Shop Inc. with my dad, Jimmy Wolfram. In this video, we are reconditioning a set of 327 small block Chevy connecting rods with ARP bolts for an engine build that we are working on for one of our customers right now in the shop. My goal is to show you a fun and informative video about what goes into reconditioning a set of connecting rods for an engine build and hopefully shed some light on uh, what we do in our shop. So here I've got a set of eight cores that we've cleaned up and inspected to make sure that they're rebuildable. And we've got our ARP rod bolts that we're going to be putting in. And here's the cap grinder and the rod hone, as well as the press. So you probably all know that when your engine leaves the factory, say it's from Chevy or Ford or whoever, um, obviously the connecting rod is a perfect circle on the big end that rides on the crankshaft. Um, but you can imagine as an engine goes through miles and miles and miles of operation, um, moving that piston up and down on the cylinder, that circle actually starts to stretch a little bit and gets worn out. And obviously this is a, a exaggerated uh, representation of that. But to fix that, what we do is actually grind some material off of this mating surface on both the rod and the cap. And that brings this circle down smaller to what the original size of the uh, connecting rod bore was. And also on the connecting rod, we put a slight angle that when you torque the cap down, it brings in that side as well. So that once we have done that, we're able to hone the connecting rod it bore out and it actually gets back to be a perfect circular uh, bore at exactly the correct size that the specifications call for. So here I'm cutting the connecting rod caps. And again, we're just grinding a little bit off of that mating surface. Um, and it's really not a lot. It might be a couple thousandths. So here I'm cutting the connecting rod and this is kind of what it looks like in real time. So I do a couple passes just flat. Um, and then on each side, I take a feeler gauge just to get a little bit of an angle on the, on the rod. Um, and like I said, I do that on both sides. And then when we torque the cap down, that's what brings in the sides of the rod. And here I'm just showing what it looks like when it's ground. So once we've ground both the cap and the rod, you can see that it leaves kind of a nasty edge. Um, so what we do is just go on the belt sander and by hand, just kind of take that edge down and give it a nice little chamfer so that um, you don't lose any bearing material when you push your bearings in. It is possible to rebuild uh, connecting rods with the original bolts, but since this is gonna be a little bit of a performance build, we are putting the ARP bolts in. Um, and obviously those come with kind of a lubricant that they use for pressing in the bolts as well as torquing them down. Um, so here I'm just applying that to the bolts before I press them into the connecting rods. I always start the bolts in straight uh, with a hammer, but we use the press to go ahead and press them on the rest of the way. And uh, I'm so good at this YouTube thing that I didn't record this in frame, but <laughs> what I'm doing here is just tapping the bolts in straight before we go ahead and press them in. So next I go through and on the hydraulic press, I press in all of the bolts into the connecting rods. So once we get the new bolts pressed in, we're kind of ready to assemble our connecting rods. And it's really important that you keep the cap and the rod matched together. So if you've ever taken an engine apart, um, it's important to number the rod and the cap um, because they are factory matched and they won't machine well if you don't have the cap um, correct with the rod. So if we ever lose a cap or think the cap and the rod don't match, we have to toss that rod and find a new one to start with. 
In order to correctly hone them to size, they also have to be torqued down just like they would be in the engine. So uh, these raw bolts call for 45 foot-pounds of torque um, on the nut, and that's what I'm going through and doing here is bringing all of those rods up to torque just like they will be when they're running in your engine. So the required bore size on 327 small journal connecting rods is 2.1247 to 2.1252 inches. So I go ahead and set my mic to the 2.1247 and I set our bore gauge so that zero is that uh, minimum side of that tolerance. So they do give you five ten thousandths uh, tolerance range, but we're able to hold it accurately within one to two ten thousandths. Um, across a whole set of rods. So before we start, I've gone ahead and set up our hone with the proper uh, mandrel for the dimension of the rod that we're doing. And this is a power stroke hone, which means that it strokes automatically. So I've set the overstroke to be correct um, on our stone. And we are gonna be starting with a rough stone um, just to rough them out to within kind of close to our finished size. And then we'll transfer over to a finer stone that leaves a finer finish as we get closer to that finished bore size. Um, and here I'm just showing, we do have several other mandrels to do a very wide range of sizes, but like I said, I've set it up for the correct uh, 2.1247 inch size for these connecting rods. And here I'm just kind of showing um, what the coarse stone looks like versus what the finer finished stone looks like. And you just, can just see it's just like sandpaper basically. Um, it's the same concept where the coarser stone takes out more material, but it doesn't leave as nice of a finish. So here's kind of a real-time view of what it looks like to hone a rod. Um, and you'll notice a few things. Obviously, um, we do have honing oil that runs across the rod the entire time. Um, and I'm always checking, I, you know, I do some strokes and then check and do some strokes and check just to make sure that we're kind of sneaking up on that final bore size. Um, the other thing you might notice is I flip the direction that the rod is facing on the mandrel and that helps, um, that helps the stones wear evenly and prevent any, um, taper, uh, across the rod because obviously you want it to be a perfect cylindrical shape and not have any taper. So usually when we start, we'll have around three to four thousandths of material to take out from the rod. And when we're finished with the rough hone, I like to leave it at around uh, half a thousandths to one thousandths so that we have a little bit to hone out with our finished stone and get that final, uh, finer finish at that final bore size. So at this point, I've finished the rough hone and I'm ready to switch to my fine finish stone and hone the rest of the rods to the finished size. Um, and I usually like to park it about two to three ten thousandths um, past the minimum bore size. So on these rods, that would be 2.1249 to 2.1250 inches. And that just parks us kind of right in the middle of that tolerance specified by the manufacturer. So once we're finished, you can see that it does leave a pretty nice crosshatch uh, finish in the connecting rod. And we go ahead and check them all and you know double check that they're perfectly circular and that there's not any taper within the rods um, so that it doesn't cause any issues in the engine down the road. And that's kind of what goes into rebuilding a set of connecting rods. Anyway, everybody, I want to say thanks for watching, and I hope that that was kind of informative and interesting for you guys to watch. Um, I might make a couple more videos about this engine build because we, uh, obviously I made a TikTok about it, um, re-sleeving the block, and it got 1.6 million views, which was crazy. Um, so it is kind of a pretty cool build that we're working on, and we are putting quite a few um, pretty cool parts into it. So I might make that video if you guys are interested, and... 
let me know below if you have any questions about anything I did because um, I'm kind of new to this and I'm not very good at explaining um, everything as well as I could be. Um, so if you have any questions or if anything was unclear, just let me know and be sure to drop a like and subscribe and you can find us on Facebook, um, Jamzy Online or Instagram. We're at Jamzy Online um, and we post a lot on TikTok now because everybody really likes those videos. So um, we're on there as Jamzy Online as well, or you can find us at www.jamzyonline.com. Um, so thanks again.